everyone my name is Devashish and I welcome you all to this video so in today's short video we are going to discuss about page heap so what is page heap so a large class of vulnerabilities in software is memory corruption uh, either due to buffer overflow or underflows so an example of this type of vulnerability is basically an attempt to write more data into a buffer than the actual size of this buffer so this is basically known as buffer overflows so page heap is a class of heap allocation policies that can be used when diagonizing or you know fuzzing uh, your application for new buffer mismanagement vulnerabilities uh, so the difficulty of dealing with buffer mismanagement issues is that memory corruption is not often observable uh, immediately at the time in that it happens so in the best case scenario the memory gets corrupted badly enough at the time of the corruption such as you know in the GUI you actually see the program has crashed but in the debugger also you see that you know uh, the debugger has stopped with an access violation immediately when the memory corruption happens uh, in the worst case although the memory corruption occurred memory doesn't get corrupted badly enough at the time of corruption so this is also known as you know silent corruption so therefore uh, we do not see an immediate crash in the user interface or the debugger however the actual you know the bad things has already happened you know long back so uh, page heap actually you know uh, allows us to you know uh, kind of debug or find out this type of issues you know this type of silent corruption issues uh, easily so uh, let's now understand how it works uh, so uh, uh, in the x86 architecture virtual memory gives each process uh, the appearance that you know it has 4 gb of address space whether uh, it doesn't matter the pages you know are actually committed or not so uh, when an address on that page is reserved but not committed and we try to re-reference that a page fault is usually generated by the hardware uh, so the page heap or you know the page heap actually you know exploits this fact by reserving a guard page at the beginning or the end of a page to make sure that an, any adjacent read or write to the buffer that crosses the boundary of that buffer right uh, is not committed so whenever we try to you know uh, try to try to access that particular page uh, and we actually immediate get immediately get a page fault so uh, guard pages are basically uh, reserved rather than com committed so uh, the window uh, and address command uh, actually returns a mem reserve mem underscore reserve for this particular state and the access attribute of this particular this type of page is usually page underscore no access okay so thereby uh, it actually disallows actually reading writing or you know execution on uh, on that particular page without actually taking up any physical memory or space or uh, in that page file so due to the fact that uh, guard pages are inaccessible but they are actually taking space in your virtual address space so that that virtual address space is basically wasted uh, so for this particular reason page heap is useful only for you know debugging purpose but in production environment it is not uh, recommended to have page heap enabled because you know a lot of the uh, your virtual uh, memory space is being wasted for this particular you know uh, guard page guard pages that are actually you know inserted uh, between two uh, adjacent memory uh, pages so now we are going to take a look at you know uh, when page heap is enabled uh, how does the memory layout look like so so basically uh, when you install windbg on your computer it comes with a tool called gflags so basically uh, gflags.exe is an executable that you are going to find in the windbg folder so once you um, once you uh, execute this command right uh, g flag slash p slash enable uh, page heap.exe slash full it is going to enable page heap for a particular process so this is actually the process you are actually enabling the page heap for okay so when you enable page heap and what you can see if you look at the memory dump of any particular heap block right what you are able to see that you know it has actually inserted card pages along uh, just next to the 
um, the actual memory allocation so this is actually is having uh, these permissions like you know mem reserve and page no access so whenever you if any buffer overflow happens with in this particular memory block right so what will happen it will try to uh, write uh, data to this but this uh, inserted guard page which is actually uh, currently having permission of no access so that time a page fault will occur and instead of you know crashing it after some times when the you know corruption gets really bad it will actually crash immediately your application is crash under debugger immediately so that you can immediately able to stop you uh, be able to understand that memory corruption has happened so that actually root cause analysis become easier so uh, there is one more option that you can actually use uh, which is actually you know backwards uh, along with this particular command slash backwards so what happens is it actually tries to uh, uh, insert guard page before the actual before allocation okay so as you can see here this uh, guard pages are actually accessed before the allocation this you know 414141 so what happens is it actually try it uh, allows you to easily track down buffer under overflows when you are actually trying to you know write data before the allocation actually starts happening so uh, these are actually you know two useful commands you can use to uh, enable uh, page heap for any particular process so in this case the process name is page heap.exe uh, it won't be actually tracking enabling page heap for all the processes the only uh, process that you know uh, the name is uh, for which the name is pagey.exe the pagey will be enabled for that one uh, so that's actually pretty much it about you know very high level uh, overview of how uh, pagey works and what is pagey so uh, that's what i wanted to discuss in today's video uh, i hope you have enjoyed the content uh, so if you uh, like the kind of content i upload on this channel i request you to you know consider subscribing to this channel as well so thank you so much for your time i'll see you in the next video bye bye